book of 2 Timothy. I love to read Timothy, 1 and 2 Timothy. I love those books. You can really tell from the writing and the way that Paul writes to Timothy that there's, there's a relationship there, that Paul really cares about Timothy and that he really wants to exhort him to greatness and to great things. Amen? Praise God. 2 Timothy 1 and 6 reads, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Everybody say, we do not have the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's good. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I'm going to step off a little bit from where I was Wednesday night in teaching. I just felt a need to. And so I'm going to preach this morning about walking in spiritual dominion. Walking in spiritual dominion. Lord Jesus, I thank you this morning for being in the house and I pray, mighty God, you anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every ear to hear. Lord, bring understanding to our mind. Help us, Lord, as we grow in this word and this truth today. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. So good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. If you're a visitor here today, please allow me to shake your hand, get to know you before you leave today. It would be my privilege. Amen. Praise God. But something that both Brother Bacchus and Brother Waddy brought out this morning. Amen. They just kind of read my notes and they started walking in the middle of my notes. So, amen. I'm glad they got together on that and one covered the first part and one got into the last part. So really I could have sat back and just let the Lord have his way. But I'm going to preach this morning in Jesus' name. But we are living in a day. That if you listen to the media, the news, and those in politics, and those that we even talk to at the water coolers, that the plight of this world seems ready to implode. War in Israel, war in the Ukraine. The dollar seems to be failing everywhere you look. The oil market is unstable, and, and society as a whole seems to be unraveling in other parts of our country unemployment is high aren't you glad we're living in texas today god bless texas amen I, we need to pray that god bless texas god bless the usa amen i i'm still thankful to be a part of the united states of america Amen. I'm still thankful for those that gave their life's blood so I could have freedom today. Amen. It may not mean something to a lot of folks, but it still means something to me. It's still worth fighting for. Amen. But if we're not careful, we as a people, amen, will allow the fear of the times to grip us. And you begin to look at all the things going on around us. And that spirit unsettling of fear begins to get into your mind. And it gets into, amen, your makeup. And you, you, you start being afraid of the times. And I, I come to bring a word today. We don't have to be afraid of the times uh, that we're living in. We don't have to, to be afraid of 
of the circumstances. Uh, the Bible lets us know, uh, amen, that in the end time, in the last days, that times will grow worse and worse and wax worse and worse and the darkness will get darker, but the light's going to shine brighter. Amen. And so I can say today that we do live in perilous times and that the times that we are living in, uh, amen, would seem as if though there is no hope. Uh, but you know what? We cannot walk in fear. We need to walk in faith. I can't walk in what I can't control. But I can walk in faith and know God is in control. Amen. I can't determine, amen, whether or not someone's going to pass or someone's going to live or someone's going to be healed or someone's not going to be healed. All I can do is walk by faith. That's why Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 6, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. You need to remember that you are a child of God, that you are full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I wish somebody would preach with me this morning. I feel like preaching. Hey, man, you know, you, you need to understand who you are and who you belong to. You are a child of God. Amen. And if somebody, amen, somebody loses their job, you don't have to be afraid. All you got to do is trust in the Lord. It didn't say H-E-B will supply all your needs according to their riches. It did not say that your employer would supply all your, your needs according to their riches. No, it said that he shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And so no matter what comes my way, no matter what happens, I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to live in doubt. I walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. That's why Paul goes on to say, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. My, 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 my. You need to get a hold of this this morning. We don't have to be afraid. We need to know the signs of the time and understand, I got to be ready. But if I'm living for God just because I'm afraid, I'm living for God for the wrong reasons. If the only reason you're coming to church to be saved is because you're afraid of going to hell, you're living for God for the wrong reason. But if you're living for God because he's so good, he delivered me from a miry clay, amen, he took me out of the pit and he saved me and I love him. And whether he blesses me or whether he takes everything away from me, I'm going to live for him every day of the week and glorify and Magnify his name. Hallelujah. I'm not going to live in fear. But I walk in power and love and a sound mind. You need power. You need love. And you need a sound mind. Well, what's, what's wrong with you? Don't, why aren't you worried about all this? What? Brother Bumgarner, don't you know what can happen? Anything can happen. I can't control people's emotions. I can't control their tempers. I can't control their bad attitudes. I can't control their mouths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm just saying it like it is this morning. I can't control what people do, but I can walk by faith. But I'm going to, so and so is going to leave the church. Man, I hate that. But you ain't going to affect my sound mind. Amen. Let me, let me preach for a minute. You say, how, how do you know you got a sound mind? Can you sleep at night? Or are you losing sleep? 
If you're losing sleep, you may not have a sound mind. If you're losing sleep, uh, fretting and worrying about everything, uh, hey amen, you need to get some peace in your life. You need to stir up the gift. If I get a little unsettled in my spirit uh, and I know that my sound mind's going to be affected, you know what I do? Uh, I just go to my prayer closet and I stir up the gift. Holy Ghost, I need you to get all over me. I need to know when I lay my head down tonight uh, that everything's going to be all right. Part of y'all's problem is, uh, is you're turning to all the things of the world uh, and you're turning to other things that can't help you and you're not stirring up the gift. Uh, and so fear plagues your mind. Uh, hey, man, you don't have love. Uh, you don't have a sound mind. Hey, Amen. Just a thought. Paul says, you don't have to be afraid. He said, I'm writing this as a prisoner. But he said, no matter what you go through, be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Did that make Paul any less powerful? Did that make Paul any less Potent in the Holy Ghost? No. He was still the man of God he was. When he saw the apostles of John the Baptist. And he prayed for them and they received the Holy Ghost. And were baptized in Jesus' name. He was the same preacher that went to uh, Antioch. Amen. And gave the word of God. He's the same preacher that went on all those missionary journeys. Uh, but now he's a prisoner. But he says, even as a prisoner, amen, I rejoice. Uh, amen. So don't be afraid of your circumstances. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are living in perilous times, but we do not have to be afraid. Look at some say, I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to live in fear. Sickness may attack your body. You don't have to be afraid. If you're living right. Praise God. You can be fighting cancer, but you don't have to live in fear if you're living right. God will sustain you. God will keep you until the appointed time. And then that's really not fearful. Because if you know where you're going, you don't have to be afraid. You ought to be excited. We sing about it. We talk about it. Oh, I want to see him. Heaven's jubilee. I'll fly away. Won't it be wonderful there? I want to see Jesus. If you really want to see him, you need to live right. You need to act right. You need to be right. Can I, can I just preach it this morning and like I feel it? I think the Lord is tired of part-time Christians. I think the Lord's tired of part-time Pentecostals. Let me just go a little further. I think the Lord's tired of some part-time Pentecostals around Peace Tabernacle. I think the Lord's ready for some of you to get full of the Holy Ghost and start operating in the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to step back a little bit. For those that were here on Wednesday, this, this will be familiar. You'll say, well, we already heard this, Brother Bumgarner. You spoke about it. But we talked about Adam and Eve in the garden. In Genesis 2, 8, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden 
and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Skipping down to verse 15 in Genesis, the second chapter. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help mate. The Lord gave him everything he needed to dwell in the garden. Everything. He created the environment. And yet, he told him one command. He said, of the trees of the garden, thou mayest eat freely, or freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And so he set a precedent. He set an order. And we learn on Wednesday night that when we're in order, amen, God gives a command. And so he lets us know, I give an order. Don't eat of the tree. I give you a helpmate to help you. And the Lord gave Adam everything he would need for dominion, a helpmate, so he wouldn't be alone. And he gave the charge. Now you go back to Genesis 1 and 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over. Everybody say over. Say God has given us dominion. The fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave Adam dominion. He gave Adam an order. Don't eat of the tree. And then he gave him dominion. And as long as Adam was submitted to his authority, amen, he had dominion. Now we understood that from Wednesday night. And I still feel this very strongly. That we need to walk in spiritual dominion. We don't have to live in fear. God has given us dominion. Authority over the things that would attack the church. We're not a wimpy church. We're a victorious church. We're not a trodden down church. Amen. Some of you need to pick your booger lips off the ground. Oh, I, well, I'm just, I'm fired up this morning because I'm tired of minimizing my Lord and my Savior, my Jesus, who has saved me from a world of sin. Can't nobody do you like him. And yet people come to church all the time and they come in my office and I love you and I'm willing for you to hear you. But when you come in with that booger lip and you say, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how we're going to make it. Oh, me, oh, my. I don't even know if I can live another day. Why don't you bury that in the Holy Ghost? You need to stop having a pity party and start having a prayer party. But no, that requires too much, Brother Bumgarner. I'd rather call everybody on the phone and complain. I would rather go on my phone and, and just tell everybody how bad it is. Because if I get into prayer, I'm going to get some peace. If I get into prayer, God may start doing something. And I'm kind of happy, you know, mulling here in the pig pen. Do you realize as long as the prodigal son stayed in the pig pen, all he was going to eat was the husk that the pigs were eating? But when he finally came to himself and said, even the servants in my father's house live better than I do, and he got himself out of the pig pen, that's the only time he could get back to daddy's house. Some of you need to pull yourself out of the pig mire and say, I'm going back home to daddy's house. I'm going to get what I need from daddy. God 
want you to walk in spiritual dominion. He planned for you to live in blessing. I'm not preaching some just blessing, blessing, blessing doctrine. I'm talking about when you live right and you act right and you are right, then you're going to receive the blessings of God. Amen. You can walk in spiritual dominion. Because in our today and age, this church age, amen, we don't have dominion over the creatures like we once did. Huh? We can't walk up to a lion and say, boy, you sure are pretty. Because when sin stepped in, chaos stepped in. And it turned the world out of order. And it turned creation against creation. Think about it. I went dove hunting yesterday. But back, aren't they supposed to behave? Don't I have dominion? The Bible said the fowl of the air. Bro, what are those things? I don't have dominion over them. Brother Williams would say, here they come. And I'd throw up that 12-gauge shotgun. Boom, 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 boom. They just fly on away. First time to ever go, I, I can't say I'm the greatest shot with a shotgun. He'd say, you stopped, you got to lead them, or you shot over them, or you sh I shot all around them. I mean, they could have probably done flybys just playing with me, and I still probably wouldn't have hit them. But there's no dominion there. There's no control there. We don't have dominion over things. We, we, we harness things and we control things. And, you know, you work with things and we call them domesticated. Huh? We call stuff wildlife. This can't be domesticated. You know, those, those dogs are domesticated. Those dogs are wild. If you take a dog and put him out in the wild where he has to fend for himself, he gets a wild nature. And that's a whole message I could preach all by itself about nature and how when you put it in the wrong environment, it will tend to go back to its original state. That's why we tell you, come out from amongst the world and be ye separate. Amen. Because if you stay out in that environment, you'll go back to that original nature and that's part of the problem why we don't have dominion because we don't have dominion over our nature we don't control our nature we just let it run rampant but can I tell somebody this morning it is the will of God that you walk in spiritual authority in this hour of peril and distress. Not fear. But faith. He longs for a church. That will rise up. Stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's within you. That you might be mightily used. In the hour which we have been called. Amen. You know, I, 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 people say all the time, well, I wish I'd have been born then, or I would have wish I'd have been born back in the early 1900s, or, or I wish I could have been a mountain man. Or, and, you know, I, I like the cowboy with as much as anybody. I do. But I like being a modern-day cowboy. Amen. I like to ride a horse as much as anybody, maybe more than some. And I've been riding, but you know what I like? I like to go ride for a couple of hours, come on, put them up in the barn and go into the house where their air condition is. Huh? We always say, well, I, you know, I, I could have lived back then. Well, we might have. Well, we would have missed a lot of things that we have today. Amen. I'm thankful for an air-conditioned building or a heated building. I'm thankful for padded pews. I'm thankful that we can, we can 
purchase the things that we need to, to have a comfortable living. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any problems with that. I'm thankful for a dishwasher. Come on, ladies. Some of you ought to be thankful for your washer and dryer. Huh? Because you don't have to use an old rub board anymore. Some of the young people are like, rub board? What's a rub board? Anybody ever used a rub board? Wow. Are y'all thankful for your washer and dryer? Aren't you glad you can just throw them in, put the detergent in? You don't have to sit there and take that homemade lime, lye soap. Anybody use lye soap? I got some nods going on. Nobody's going to admit to that, huh? That you made yourself. Aren't we blessed today? We're blessed. We're blessed. One of my friends from, he's from Sicily, Brother Franco Pl Plantania. He's out in California evangelizing. But, you know, he told me when we was in school together, he said, look, if you want to, to get a woman to fall in love with you over here in Sicily, buy her a washer and dryer. She'll, he, they'll love you for the rest of your life. Because to us over here, that's no big thing. But to them over there, hey, we're, we're blessed. Amen. We get into automobiles, even if the good used automobiles run better than some things. Huh? Nobody had to get up this morning and go hitch up the team so we could load up the wagon, which they did just about 70 years ago. Huh? Anybody have to go chop wood this morning so we'd have fire for the stove? See what you young men missed out on in life? Because back in Brother Gilmore's day, you had to get up and feed the fire. And usually the one that got to feed the fire was the young man in the family. Anybody can give me a witness on that? But nowadays, if we're hot, we go over to the thermostat. We're cold. And if something's not working, Brother Bobby can attest to this in his business. If people are uncomfortable for even just a little bit, they get irate. I'm hot! Well, you live in Texas. It gets hot. And I say all of that, a hundred years ago, what did they do? They opened a the window. That's why you had the dog run, the breezeway, because you had the rooms, but everybody kind of went out in the breezeway because that's where the breeze blew through. But in our day and age, we're spoiled. We're spoiled. We're, we're, we, we have so much to, we have so much stuff. We suffer from stuffitis. And what happens is, that really affects our faith. See, I was going somewhere with this. And I, I read lots of accounts of the early church in the United States, and the pioneers, and the brush arbors, and, and the times that they had nothing. Nothing. They fasted not because, amen, they wanted to fast. They just didn't have no food, and so they just fasted and trusted God until... Somebody sent them a box of turnips. And even I, after about three weeks, could probably eat a turnip. And yet they were powerful in the Holy Ghost. They had dominion over the spiritual realm in which they existed in. And I still feel today that even with all the things that we're blessed to have, we can still have spiritual dominion. We can still operate in the Holy Ghost. But it's going to be harder for you and I to get to spiritual dominion, perhaps to those in the past who had very little, because to you that have a whole lot, you got to let a lot of it go. You say, you mean I got to get rid of it? I didn't say you had to get rid of it, but you can't let it consume you. Too many times we let so much stuff 
consume us uh, that we can't focus on our spiritual man. If this fast has done anything for you over the last 21 days or 19 days, we got two days to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. But one thing I've learned is, hey, the denying of myself uh, helps me get closer to the Lord. The denying of myself. Amen. Pushing away those things I really want. Amen. Help me. Even though I see a little Debbie, I say, I don't need you, and I don't want you in Jesus' name, and I don't eat it. Even though, amen, you may want to drink that Coke, you said, thank you, Lord. I'm going to get closer to you. Even though I have all these niceties. Sure, I've been challenged over the last three weeks. Sure, I've wanted things that I... I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm trying to get close. Because that's what fasting's all about. It ain't so we can say, well, we went on a fast. It's so I can deny myself uh, so I can get closer to the Lord uh, so that I can walk in the Spirit uh, and have dominion over the enemy that would come against me. We've got to get out of the reform state of mind. Brother Waddy, I am not a part of the Reformated Church. <laughs> We're not a part of the Reformated Church. The Reformated Church come out of Catholicism. I am not, I am not ever going to call myself a Catholic. But the Reformated Church takes their being. Catholicism to Lutheran to Calvinism to Baptist to Methodist. It all comes, its roots, out of the Catholic Church, which is based on false doctrine. Well, praise God anyhow. There is no power there. There is no power there. All there is is a lot of words, a lot of false teaching. Amen. When they glorify Mary more than they glorify Jesus Christ, I got a problem with that. She's the mother of Jesus Christ, but she was the mother in the flesh, not deified, not spiritualized. And Reformation came out of the Catholic, Catholic Church. Amen. I, that, you know, Jesus paid it all. And we know he paid it all. But can I tell you? My birthplace goes back to Pentecost. That's why I say I'm a Pentecostal. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Amen. I haven't been reformed. Amen. The Bible said in Acts 1 and 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And I thank God today for being a one God apostolic Pentecostal. Just like they were on the day of Pentecost when the power of the Holy Ghost fell and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues and the Lord filled them, amen, to the uttermost and they began to operate under the power of the Holy Ghost. We're not a reformated church. We're a Pentecostal church. And our roots go back to the day of Pentecost where the Holy Ghost fell out. Amen. And we know that from that time forth, the apostles moved and operated in the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's still the same today as it was back then. Hallelujah. And so I need to get some of you out of that reformated mindset. Did you hear me? I need to get you out of a reformated mindset. Because the Catholic Church says everything goes to the priest. But a Pentecostal church says everything operates in the Holy Ghost. Now, I've already covered the authority thing. But too many times, it's if Brother Bumgarner doesn't pray for me, then I won't be healed. That's a reformated mindset. That if the man prays for me, I'll be healed. That's a reformated mindset. Oh, I just feel the Holy Ghost. It's... 
And the Lord's saying, why don't my church be my church? Well, if I filled them with the Holy Ghost, I didn't mean for them to sit dormant on a pew uh, waiting for some man on a platform uh, to operate in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. If I filled them with the Holy Ghost, I want them to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Praise God. It's never the will of the Lord for you as a vessel of the Holy Ghost to be a part, be a dormant part of the body. But he is looking for those who will rise up and demonstrate his power and authority amongst those who believe and those who do not believe. Well, I operate in the gifts of the Holy Ghost, but just at church. Hogwash. That's part of your problem. Only time you're spiritual is when you come to church. We got to be careful that we, we operate in the power of the Holy Ghost and not just the power of our own words, our own ideology, our own thinking. Because I'll tell you this. I've heard people speak and speak and speak and talk God speak and talk word. And I've talked theologians for the last 20-something years. And I do it all the time. And I'm thankful that I can do that. I thank God for the word of God. But when people say, well, I don't have an understanding of that, so I don't believe that. Well, just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I've seen eyes opened. I've seen people that couldn't walk, walk. Well, praise the Lord. I've seen God heal broken bones. Amen. I've been to church with a cast on my foot. Or not a cast, but it cracked the, the ankle bone. And it keeps reminding me when it gets cold that it's cold. Amen. Because I was at a, youth, at a camp meeting and a, a big old boy fell on top of me. So I had to go to the... I had to go, to the, you know, twisted it, and on top of twisting it, he landed on top of me. So, minor fracture, minor sprain, and, and uh, you know, the doctor said, we won't put a cast on it, we're just going to put a boot on it. And, and so, I had crutches, and I went to church that night, and, and the Holy Ghost got to moving, and, and the Lord said, if you'll start praising me, I'll heal you. So, I said, all right. It hurt. It hurt. It didn't feel good. But I started shouting. And when I got to shouting, the pain went away. So I cast the crutches aside. I said, thank you, Lord. And I danced all over that tabernacle. So if you tell me God can't heal, I'll tell you you're a liar. Amen. Amen. But you got to operate in the Holy Ghost. You got to be under the power of the Spirit. And you got to obey. Hello? Hello? I've been to a doctor. I can take you to a doctor. They did an x-ray. Did, did one of them things like, you know, ultrasound. Gallstones. Lord, I don't want a surgery. I'm scared. See, that was a true statement right there. And it went over some of y'all's heads. I mean, who really wants somebody to cut on them? So as a 20-year-old young man, I went to church and prayed, Lord, you're either going to heal me or kill me. <laughs> would you know he just didn't heal me right off the bat? I went to school. It's still, that gallbladder would attack. And I mean, it would, anybody ever had a gallbladder attack? I mean, it pains up and all around. And, but he woke me up one Sunday morning and said, today I'm going to do something special for you. Went to church Sunday morning. Nothing happened. Lord, I thought you were going to do something. You told me this morning, you're going to do something special for me, Lord. Went to church that night, Sunday night. Had a good service, nothing special to talk about. But the preacher got up and started talking about the power of the Holy Ghost and the healing power of the Lord. And he started naming things. 
He, there was a lady battling asthma. He named asthma. God healed her. And he named a couple other things. Brother Myers, he got over to God. He said, I want you to know God can heal you of your gallstones. And as soon as he said that, something hit me and picked me up out of my chair. I mean, it felt like fire going through my body. And ever since then, I've been healed of my gallstones. Now, I know two ways I know. When I went recently to a doctor, I said, now, I've had gallstones, and, and uh, you know, maybe I have them again. And, and they did a little test. No, you never had gallstones. I got proof I've had them. And the other thing, I can eat a greasy pizza or a greasy burger, and it don't bother me. And if you've ever had gallstones, you know as soon as you eat something greasy, hey, man, it's like hitting your stomach with a hammer. Why I say all that? I say it because we need to understand we serve a mighty God who has endued us with the power of the Holy Ghost. And it may not come instantaneously. It may not come right when we want it. But if we'll walk in faith, even though I'm hurting, I'm going to trust you. Even though uh, my world seems to be turned upside down, Lord, I'm not going to doubt you. I'm going to hold on to faith. Uh, I'm going to operate in the power of God. Amen. I learned this. I learned this. When that when I would get attacked by the gallstones, you know, my physical body, what would I do? Man, I'd sit down. I'd get on the edge of the bed because it hurt. I'm not going to josh you. It hurt. And I'd sit there doubled over, and I'd just begin to pray. And I'd begin to say, thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue. Thank you, Lord, for touching my physical body. I mean, that's all I could do is rock and pray. Rock and pray. Lord, I know you're going to heal me. Of course, the enemy says, well, he ain't healed you yet. You're still rocking. That's all right. Maybe he wants me to pray a little bit more. So can I give you a little word of encouragement today? Because you may be going through it, and you may be hurting. You may be down. You may be down. Keep rocking. Get in your chair and grab a hold of yourself and keep rocking, saying, Lord, I know you're my healer. I know you're my way maker. I know you're my deliverer. I have dominion over the fear that is attacking my mind, attacking my body. I refuse to give the devil one more day saying that you cannot do something. I'm going to walk by f I have spiritual dominion. Hey Amen. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. 1 Corinthians 2 and 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. He didn't come blabbing his mouth about all he knew. For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And I wish to unleash on Peace Tabernacle this morning that your faith not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. With God, all things are possible. We get to listen to the wisdom of men too much and not to the voice of the Lord. Amen. But with God, all things are possible. And so the Lord this morning is ready for you to be a sold-out apostolic. I said a sold-out apostolic who will operate in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm ready for some of you to get so full of the Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost can operate in you. But we cannot vacillate between spirit and carnality and expect to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. We need to be spiritually minded. For to be carnally minded is death. 1 Corinthians 12 and 4. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversity of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. 
but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit and if that is true this morning can i ask the question when are you going to get so full of the holy ghost that you can operate in the gifts who amongst us is the one who has the gift of faith? Who amongst us has that gift of healing? Who amongst us will receive the gift of knowledge? Who amongst us will receive the gift of wisdom? But no, we want to reformize it. Well, that's only for the ministry. That's only for preachers. I don't believe that. He didn't say, ye shall be endued with power from the Holy Ghost. But, now we're only going to let those preachers have power. Now, I know some preachers that believe that, but they can be wrong too. I believe a saint of God full of the Holy Ghost. Not a carnal saint. Not a half in, half out saint. Not a saint that says one thing and does another. But a saint that sowed out the whole route. Full of the Holy Ghost. Hey, there's some saints that God I'll listen to before I listen to a preacher. Come on, I'm not bashing preachers today. I am one. But I want you to understand that you as the body of Jesus Christ, amen, he has filled you by one spirit. We are one body. Amen. There's many members here, but God wants us to operate in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. He wants to operate in you. If God gives you a word of knowledge for somebody, operate in it. If he gives you a word of wisdom for somebody, operate in it. If he gives you a, 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 a spirit of healing that you would pray for somebody and they be healed, operate in it. Obey the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I'm not sure. Hey, if you're not sure, say, Pastor, here's what I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost. I guarantee you, Pastor's going to back you up. we got to operate in the Holy Ghost. Hey, Amen. It's time that we as a church lay down our carnal excuses and rise up to the challenge of the Spirit and begin to have spiritual dominion to walk in this place understanding the operations of the Holy Ghost because when we operate in the Holy Ghost we have dominion over the hand of the enemy. So when I line up with God's word, when I line up with his God's authority, amen, I have God's blessings. I have full dominion over the enemy and nothing that comes against us, amen, will prosper. He has all power. And some of you believe that, but some of you are like the disciples and you, you doubt, uh, like they did in Matthew 28 and 17. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What happened was there was an execution of the power of, ter of attorney. And all power and all authority in heaven and earth was given unto him. Amen. It was in full effect. He was establishing, establishing himself not just as the express image of God. Now hear this. Hear this. Jesus came as the son of God, the second Adam, as the express image of God. But when he completed the task. He became the complete, restored image of God. Adam was made in his image. Jesus was the express image. But when Jesus went to Calvary and shed his blood and rose again, he became the complete image, restored, so that he might have dominion over 
all things. And when we get full of the Holy Ghost and we walk in the Spirit, we become that complete restored image of God so that we have dominion over everything going on around us. You say, prove it some more. Revelations 1 and 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys to death, of hell, and of death. Think about it. What was he saying? I'm reminding you, John. All power in heaven and in earth belongs to me. And so why should we be afraid of circumstances? We have spiritual dominion. Why should I worry about what's going on around me? I have spiritual dominion. When I'm living right for God, when I'm lined up, I walk in the Holy Ghost. He shut and when you are right with God and you are living for God, amen, you have dominion. Oh, I wish you could get this this morning. I want you to think with me right now. What are you battling in your home? What are you battling on your job? What are you battling just in yourself? Because when you put those things under you in the Holy Ghost, you'll be able to exercise in the gifts of the Spirit. Remember the words of Jesus, Matthew 16 and 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We don't have to be afraid of the attack of the enemy against us. He may have won some battles, but he will not win the war. He may have caused you to fall into sin in your past, but thank God for the blood of Jesus that I can repent of my sins, be washed afresh, and get up and become victorious. The gates of hell shall not prevail. No weapon formed against you will prosper. What did he say? And I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You think about it. He has the keys of hell and death. And he cannot conquer you if you do not submit to it. But understand this. You will submit to an authority in your life. Spiritually, you always submit to something. You either submit to the authority of God or you will submit to the spirit of the devil. That's why the word of God says that if you're, if you're not for Christ, you're antichrist. And that's not just talking about one individual. It's talking about the unbeliever. Think about it. And yet we have these keys. Passed down through the windows of time to this present generation. We are not a weakened church. We are not a watered down version of the church that was established at Pentecost. No! We are a glorious church filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Walking in spiritual dominion. Overthrowing the strongholds that the enemy has put in our lives. And I'm trying to tell somebody this morning. It's time to cast aside your fear and operate in the Holy Ghost uh, through faith. Uh, and see the hand of the Lord begin to do mighty things. Ha <laughs> It's time for you to say, I can do all things through Christ uh, who strengtheneth me. Not that I can't, uh, but I can. I wonder, as I come to a close this morning, you stand to your feet. Uh, who wants to come and bind some things today?
You've been battling the enemy, and the enemy says, I'm in control. And carnal, we have listened. But let me, it's time to tell him, like John said, 1 John 4 and 4, year of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, the devil's been casting some doubt and unbelief. Some of you are battling things in your physical body. But you need to say, devil, I'm a child of God. I'm of God and I've already overcome you. And greater is he that is within me than anything in this world. And I bind you today. Some of you need to come up here and bind the spirit of lust. And some of you need to bind the spirit of false doctrine. And some of you need to bind the spirit of drugs that would possess your mind. And say, I'm going to bind you, devil. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to have dominion over you. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The enemy would only come to steal and to kill and destroy your soul. But will you rise up and say, not today. I'm tired of you ruling my life. I'm tired of you ruling my family. Greater is he that is in me. I challenge the church today. Come on, rise up and walk in spiritual dominion. You may not be able to go to where that person you're praying for is, but you can operate in the Holy Ghost and through prayer by the Spirit be there. Come on, somebody. Prayer warriors, will you pray with me this morning? Pray one for another. That's it. Operate in the Holy Ghost. Some need encouragement this morning. And if God is leading you to pray for somebody, reach over and lay your hand on them and begin to pray for them. Some need the Holy Ghost today. Some need to be delivered. Reach out and touch them. Minister in the power of the Holy Ghost. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you to help me, Jesus. I'm battling. I'm struggling. I'm battling my own self, Lord. I need a way out. I need a way of escape. I need you to help me. I need to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. I need healing virtue to flow in my body because I need the healer to step in today. I refuse to let fear grip my mind. I'm going to walk by faith, Lord. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my way maker. You're my savior today.